have you ever donated to charity and wondered, what impact has my donation actually made? I'm going to talk you through my journey in exploring that question, through my experiences in the charity sector, through my decision to create the only comprehensive database of charity impact in the UK, and the fascinating insights that came from analysing that data, including the realisation that not only can all of us have a huge impact on people's lives through the donations we make, but through smart giving, through being a data-driven donor, we can multiply that impact by a factor of 100 or even 1,000. First, let's start with the question. When you donate to charity, do you ever have that feeling that your money's just going into a black hole? Does it ever feel like I've given 10 pounds and all I know now is that I'm 10 pounds poorer? I felt like a great way to get to the bottom of this question was to spend more time with actual charities. So I volunteered with several. There are lots of anecdotes I could tell about my experiences. I'm going to choose just one. I was volunteering with a phone helpline. And one particular call that I got from a distressed person is one that I don't think I'll ever forget. That person told me about traumas that they'd experienced that were so horrific. I was in awe at that person's strength and resilience to survive what they had survived. I was in anger at the injustice of a world where something like this could happen. When I was next in the branch, there was a note for me. That person I'd been speaking to had called back and wanted me to know that through that conversation, there had been a connection made. It was a turning point. And the thing I don't think I'll ever forget is that that person was alive today and they wouldn't have been if I hadn't been there. I felt really humbled and privileged to have had that sort of impact on the life of somebody who was suicidally despairing. And it was through experiences like this one and many others that I came to realise that, of course, the answer is no, it's not a black hole. When you donate to charity, it's not just going nowhere, that the charity sector really is having an impact on people's lives, that it is really making people's lives better. So why was it that for me, as a charity donor, I still felt dissatisfied with this answer. I thought about it some more, and at the time I was working in finance, I was crunching data on companies and helping investors to optimise their outcomes for their portfolios. Um, and I was wondering, is there some way that I can use data analysis to help me to make better charitable giving decisions? So that I'm not just trying to answer the question, am I giving to a charity that does something and not nothing, but rather to try and do the most good I can with the donations that I'm making. When I was thinking about this, there was one idea that seemed really seductive. I thought, why don't we get all of the charities, list them out, and rank them according to how much they spend on admin or how much they spend on overheads? This seemed really promising. But I'd also seen, through my experiences in the charity sector, through being a trustee of many charities, I realised that actually this was not going to work. I discovered that admin expenses, as a ratio, give you a full sense of efficiency and a full sense of transparency. For example, imagine you have the staff complement of a charity, and then you take out the admin staff what happens? Well, the admin work doesn't go away. And so it means that the remaining staff, possibly more qualified staff, end up picking up the remaining work. By focusing on lower admin, we might not be making a charity more efficient. We might be making them less efficient. Also, there's no hard and fast rule about what is admin and what isn't admin. So by optimising for the lowest admin costs, we might actually just be choosing a charity that's classified expenses in one way rather than another way. And this is actually not what we're interested in at all. So 
admin expenses overheads, this I realized is not helping us. Inspiration came for what might be useful when I was buying a mobile phone. It was an important decision, and there were lots of questions to ask, but I realized at no point was I asking, but how much is Samsung's CEO paid? How much does Apple spend on admin? There were lots of questions that I did ask, and they followed a pattern. How much does the phone cost? What do I get for my money? I wondered, could this be a framework for thinking about charitable giving too? Is there an appetite amongst donors for thinking in this way? Well, clearly to some extent there must be because some charities are already using this sort of language in their marketing. Is the data available? Well, I'm very familiar with the charity sector. I know how charities put together their reports and where they go. And I had a look around and I found that even outside of that minority of charities that communicate in this way, the answer is yes, there is charity impact data out there. Not always for every charity, not always to the same level of detail and standards that I'd like, but yes, there is charity impact data out there in the public domain, on the internet. Was there anybody who was already taking all of the data that's out there and putting it together in one nice structured place where it can be analyzed and used? There wasn't. My project started just with me and a spreadsheet on Saturday afternoons or in evenings, going around on the internet, picking up data, putting it in there. After I got to almost 100 charities, I started to analyze and understand the data more. And some really interesting stuff came out of that. In this chart, each dot represents one charity. So for example, that dot in the middle there is NAPAC, the National Association for People Abused in Childhood. In this case, I've actually met with the management team of that charity, and I can vouch for the fact that these guys are smart, credible, they really know what they're talking about in, this sub in their subject area. One of the volunteers in this project has gathered data on this charity, and based on that, I'd estimate that if you can donate £100 to this charity, for example, maybe you donate £10 a month for almost a year, then you funded them enough to enable one person to get access to their services via their phone helpline. A phone helpline not dissimilar to the one that I volunteered on myself. And if you do that, you've done something really awesome. You've enabled someone to get access to something that might be really useful information, or it might be an extraordinary, transformative, life-changing event. And if you've done that, that's amazing, and I'd really like to congratulate you for that. The real opportunity comes when we use the data to explore the rest of the charity space. Remember earlier I said there were two questions we were interested in. One of them is, how much does it cost to achieve a charitable outcome, a vaccination, a child educated or whatever? And what do we get for our money? How much good does that outcome create? And that's what these two axes represent. The x-axis over here is how much does it cost? If you go further to the right, it becomes cheaper. And the y-axis is an estimate of how much good is done per thing funded. Let's look at another one of these dots. This uh, dot over here, which should be slightly to the left, uh, sorry, slightly to the right, represents SCI, the Schistosomiasis Control Initiative. This is a charity that treats people, mostly in Africa, for a parasitic gut disease. These treatments enable people to, um, to not have this disease anymore, which obviously has a, a clear impact on their well-being. And there's also a number of subtle and robustly tested impacts on education and income in later life. It's also a really reliable and consistent treatment. The fascinating thing is that this is incredibly inexpensive. Taking into account all of the costs, transport, warehousing, admin, everything, the total cost to get to just one person is under a pound. 
which means that if you're donating £10 a month for a year, over 100 people get access to this treatment. I thought, would charity donors not want to have access to this sort of data when they're donating? Would you, as a donor, not want to know for the amount that I'm donating to this charity, I might reach one person? Or, by choosing a different charity, the same money might help three people, or ten people, or a hundred people, or a thousand people? And would you not want to know what is the impact that's having on a per-person basis to know whether reaching a thousand times more people is having a thousand times more impact? These questions inspired me to create SoGive, a not-for-profit social enterprise, which is creating an online giving platform where you can make donations to charities online and you can have access to this data so that you can make smart giving decisions and have hundreds or thousands of times more impact. And when you've donated to a charity, you can see not just what does the charity do, but how much of that charity's impact is attributable to me, the donor, and my donations. I believe that the potential here is huge. I believe that there's a possibility that people will say, now that I can see how much impact I'm having, I feel motivated to give more. There's a possibility that people will say, now that I can express my donations in terms that are meaningful to me, I feel more comfortable sharing them online. We can have more virality of, of charitable giving. And I believe that it's possible that through this mechanism, we can become data-driven donors. And as data-driven donors, we can have a huge extra impact on people's lives, hundreds of times more impact, thousands of times more impact, not even without having to give more to charity. So I would encourage you, if you also would like to be a data-driven donor, visit SoGive.org, sign up. It only takes a moment. We're at the early stages, we're building momentum, and we would like to see a change in the world. Thank you.